Welcome back to the podcast. Jake Dobrens is my guest for this episode. We talk about his upcoming book, AI in Church and Ministry, and uh, other topics. He is a certified polymath, identifying as a writer, teacher, minister, coach, and creative thinker. He founded Theophany Media, a Christian entertainment and education company, exploring the intersection of Christ and creativity. He holds two degrees from Oklahoma Christian University, and he his published work includes plays, nonfiction books, and a novel. And he has produced podcasts such as Creatively Christian. I hope you enjoy this episode with Jake. Got a lot going on uh, in life and, and in the last few years. So uh, looking forward to, to learning more uh, about uh, th- your journey and, and also what's next for you. But uh, as we start, can you introduce yourself to, to listeners and uh, tell them more about yourself? Sure. Well, Savant, this is this is always a difficult question for me because I wear many hats um, and that's kind of how I like it. Uh, these days, though, I kind of inhabit the spaces um, of ministry, of being an author of writing um, and entrepreneurship, those kind of spaces. Uh, I consider myself a teacher, just I, mean, I just I'm a teacher just to the core, even though I'm not currently in a you know professional teaching role. Um, those are just some of the hats I wear, and I just honestly at its core, I like to communicate, uh, specifically Christian messages, uh, but other messages too. I just like to creatively communicate Christ, like that's kind of my thing, and mm-hmm. tell stories that help people rethink or to. Uh, analyze the way they interact with the world so mm. that takes a bunch of forms but that's kind of what i like to do nice the uh, uh when you were younger were there uh certain um stories uh or, or storytellers that that you were interested in um you know that's 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 an interesting question i i got really influenced by kind of apologetics and that sort of world. I've sort of um, stepped out of that world since then, but I was influenced a lot by those speakers, people who were passionate about defending the faith and challenging culture. And where I have diverted from some of those beliefs now I think in many ways I've retained that look. I I was raised by my parents, by my church to really think critically about culture, about the church's role in culture. So I think I've, I'm still sort of stuck with that. um, And and those storytellers and those people that have shaped my journey, uh, even though I have changed and and evolved in some of that aspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, in in college and then also uh my first time through seminary definitely uh was in, in a, apologetics mode uh l- learning to to defend the faith and uh, um historical christianity things like that um w- would be arguing with people that's right <laughs> online uh about the existence of god and and things like that um and uh i I, I've changed a, a little bit since then. That that was uh, when I was in seminary to uh, to become a pastor or a army chaplain. Uh, but but since then I did a counseling degree, and uh, in, in, instead of arguing with folks, uh, I, I look to connect uh, connect with pe- folks more and listen to their stories. Um, yeah, uh, but much but, better method. <laughs> yeah, the uh, but some one thing that uh i i've grown in is is seeing myself as more of a teacher um i told myself that i i wasn't a teacher or a good teacher i told myself i wasn't creative for for a lot of years and um kind of opening up and and and, and then be eventually embracing that was helpful but i but i want to become more a, a better storyteller and mm. uh and so the uh so uh l- connecting with authors like like yourself it has been one way to 
to be inspired and 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 be more sure. creative. So can can you uh uh tell tell us a little bit about your your educational background um and and your teaching background. Yeah, so um I uh departed God's country aka Oregon to come down to another state that starts with O, Oklahoma. Um, I've only lived in states that start with O, only two states, but hey, you know, it's a pattern, nonetheless. Um, and I got my uh, bachelor's in biblical studies with a communication studies minor. And then I immediately jumped into a master's of theological studies degree at the same university. Um, and the plan was to be a Bible or theology professor for the longest time. Wow. And I changed that desire um, just because I became more aware of kind of what I wanted to do with my life. I want to have a little bit more flexibility and freedom. I was also a little concerned with the state of Christian higher education in terms of would they be able, you know, with the amount of people getting PhDs versus the amount of positions and things like that. Mm. Um, so I decided that what was more important to me was just kind of finding other outlets to use that knowledge and that understanding. And so I, you know, did some ministry, uh, a college minister and associate minister for a time. I have also gone into, I, I've taught at a private classical school, Christian, classical Christian school, and I've taught in a public school, uh, an, an, an urban public school here in in Oklahoma. So I have a lot of kind of diverse experiences there. Um, even when in those teaching roles outside of the church, I was not utilizing my degree necessarily. Um, even at the classical school, I was doing debate and different things like that that were not Bible or theology. Um, I still just can't seem to escape teaching, no matter how much I try. Mm. Uh, similarly to church ministry, I have never felt called to do church ministry, which people are often surprised to hear because I got degrees that are usually associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I just, um, I just didn't see myself ever imagine myself at one particular congregation. Uh, I have always been fascinated with these digital tools like podcasts. Hey, what do you know? Uh, different ways to be able to influence people, uh, teach people, connect with people uh, that aren't the same as just let me preach to you from my podium and, you know, listen to what I have to say. Right. Right. So that, that that's fascinating. The, do you have any advice, Jake, for a Bible college student or a seminary student who might uh, like be feeling the same way about um alternatives to mm -hmm. having a church job um uh like what what's available for for folks with like a bible degree out there um uh the outside of the church uh realistically not a lot unless you're really creative about how you present that and there are coaches and consultants and people that have sprung up that are specifically about this subject of helping people with a seminary education transition into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I think the most transferable skill is that sort of critical thinking and communication focus that I have get. So I, I try to, to, I mean, there's a reason I've ended up in teaching roles. I mean, that's what I was essentially trained to do. The most marketable skill was communicate things that I learn and to help people think deeply about subjects, whether that's when I was teaching debate or when I was teaching U.S. history or Western Hemisphere geography, whatever it was, uh, I, I think it's it's always good to kind of think about those transferable skills. Um, but I, we we live in a world where, you know, I I think technology has opened up new avenues like podcasting and Facebook groups, and there are just different ways to be able to teach and think and um, engage with these ideas. And I am a believer that, you know, if, if we are wanting that 
really solid biblical education, but maybe don't see ourselves in ministry, that there's a thousand and one ways to do ministry. Uh, you don't have to have a caller. You don't have to have a title. You don't have to have a church. And of course, I'm a f- huge believer in the local church and that power of that community. Um, I say explore what else the these other avenues of ministry specifically digital ones i think are really exciting um and something i'm I'm passionate about yes that that, that that's a good segue to yeah. your, your your uh book that's coming out uh march 1st uh th- this week uh uh on ai and the church the uh so uh i i'm curious how you um, became interested in that and, um, and, and, and how you've gone about learning uh, about uh, artificial intelligence. Yeah, I've always been interested in technology um, as this conversation has probably already revealed as I've been interested in theology and in teaching Technology is one of those ways that we can kind of bridge that, a way to teach theology, to teach the Bible, to teach faith, uh, to transmit that. And so I've always kind of been interested in technology. And, you know, maybe that's because I'm a a zillennial. I don't know if I'm a millennial or Gen Z. I'm kind of smack in the middle there. 1997, weird year. and, And so I've kind of grown up in with technology and have that kind of unique relationship and artificial intelligence was just kind of, you know, it was, it was getting hyped. I was interested in it. I started seeing a lot of Christians just dismiss it outright. And I felt like, okay, I got to dig in. I got to think about this. And um, that led to a book pretty quickly. Uh, one of that reason why it was so quick is because I felt like, okay, this is kind of cutting edge stuff. I want to kind of get out in front of this. Um, but I also want to prep people for the onslaught because I don't think artificial intelligence is going away tomorrow. Um, and it's going to get crazier. I mean, we've already seen um, in the past few weeks, the way that artificial intelligence can create videos and I've seen some stuff. I mean, man, things like deep fakes, fake news was already bad enough. We're, we're in for a wild ride. Um, let me just put it that way. And uh, critical thinking is going to be more important than ever. Wow. So I, I wanted to, to research that and to figure out how can we use this technology without losing the human connection? Um, that's something I stress in my book. Mm-hmm. Human connection is the goal of technology should already always be to make us more human rather than less human. Yes. The, uh, as a, a counselor, as a therapist, yeah. uh, I, I, I'm already saying we, we, we need to retain our humanity, uh-huh. uh, because there, there's already, um, uh, chat bot, uh, therapists, uh, yeah. And, uh, machines that are learning to mimic empathy and uh and and a lot of the, the counseling type communication um the, the chat gpt if you ask it for a meal plan or exercise plan or yeah. even a plan for self-care and healthy habits um and improving your motivation it will give you uh a a, a game plan uh like in two seconds <laughs> That's actually pretty legit. Um, uh, but ministry, spiritual growth, emotional growth, relational health, it, it, it's about connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and 100%. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the technology is a tool. Like we're using this tool uh, to communicate yep. and, and connect. And um, so uh, I, I try not to be fearful or, or uh, demonize it. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm still early kind of thinking through, uh, be, because I think f- f- how fast things are going five years from now, it, it will be amazed, um, th- uh, at, at where we're at. <laughs> it's just changing so fast. No doubt. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I like to say mm. I'm cautiously optimistic. Um, mm. I'm an optimistic guy. It's just who I am. 
Mm-hmm. I think the future is going to be better um, in some respects, but I, with every advance advance of technology, as it extends, this is from the uh, communicator Marshall McLuhan, as technology extends something about humanity, it atrophies something else. So we mm. always got to be aware of what are we losing as we gain X, Y, and Z from this technology. But I'm cautiously optimistic. Oh, that, that's that's good. I don't want to get too much into like the the the, the cautions or the fears, um, mm-hmm. because uh, that could be a downward spiral uh, for <laughs> for me. I mean, you know, I hear some frustrations from my high school uh, teacher wife about mm. the use of Chat GPT on things with students. Mm-hmm. Um, but w- what would you say, Jake? Are the things that you're optimistic about, like, uh, and uh, in your book, you sh- share like practical ways that uh, AI can help church leaders and church community. But c- can you share a few here on, on the podcast? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm most excited about how AI can help small church leaders and ministers um, kind of have this extra advantage. I have uh, I have been in small churches before I, I minister to them, I do pulpit supply in some really small rural, rural churches where I drive two hours to go preach to 18 people, um, yeah. which I love. I That's did that awesome. this morning. It's super fun. <laughs> but these churches don't often have the financial resources or the people resources to mm-hmm. be able to do all sorts of things. Uh, so I see as part of that optimistic future that really AI can help small church leaders with um, a lot of the tasks that, you know, we didn't go to seminary for um, the administrative kind of things, the, we need the, the logo designed. We need the um, calendar planned, the, what, you know, things like that. I mean, and studies have shown, I, I saw a Barna group study that said a lot of, a lot of pastors their their favorite thing is the the teaching the preaching huge chunk of the pie and their least favorite thing is that little nitty gritty paperwork kind of administrative stuff mm-hmm. and i'm excited in how artificial intelligence can help streamline some of that which allows ministers more time to minister that's the whole goal here mm-hmm. i'm not somebody that says chat gpt should write your sermon uh, although something like artificial intelligence can also extend the life of your sermon, can make discussion questions for small groups, mm. can suggest social media snippets, uh, you know, can can even take your sermon video and slice and dice it for different social media formats if you want to extend the message and conversation. So I'm excited about that kind of stuff. The ways that you know, it's the little things that artificial intelligence can just help make a little more efficient, help make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, The sort of things that they don't teach you in seminary, but what do you know, end up being a huge part of what it means to, to be involved in a church. Uh, You have to know the nitty gritty stuff uh, more than just, you know, being able to explain the Christology of, of John or something like that. There's a lot more, that goes into church that we often aren't super excited about and AI can step in, play a role. Right. Yeah. The, uh, you know, with small churches, uh, with, uh, maybe not many people on staff, maybe not having a budget for Mm -hmm. a, uh, the, the church or a a media specialist, uh, of, a video specialist or yeah. social media uh, account m- manager. Uh, a lot of those tasks uh, can, can, can be automated. I, uh, I, I learned this last week, uh, an app uh, called cap cut. It does mm-hmm. like the, um, uh, the captions uh, uh, the, 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 and, but, but uh, you can also uh, do a script and it makes like a short video based on the description you made. Um, and th- that's, that's wild because you don't have totally. to, um, you don't have to hire actors. You don't have to like set aside half a day or all day to film a, a 
30 second, one minute video. Now it, it just, it literally took 20 seconds. Um, sure. To, to just hit play or create and it created it uh, for me. Uh, it, it, it's amazing. It, it's amazing. The uh, now with, uh, with, with, with AI, um, be, be, uh, what are some other ways uh, be, besides helping uh, small churches uh, w- with kind of that admin stuff? What, what are some other things that you're, you're seeing or learning about, Jake? Well, I already mentioned like kind of the um, extending the teaching, extending the learning um, mm-hmm. where you, with one sermon, you could get, a week's worth of devotional content, relevant scriptures, questions, all from plugging in your sermon. I also like to use um, different AI tools to help me come up with sermon illustrations. It's like, okay, I, like, I know my, you know, I know how to analyze my text. That's what I learned a lot in school. Mm. You know, I've written papers on this kind of stuff, but it's like, okay, but I need like a good story here or a good example. And it will say, Okay, well, you know, tell a time when X, Y, Z happened in your life, and I'll be like, I do have a time. I can tell that story, which helps bring the the uh, the text to life and to think about it and and stuff like that. I mean, that's what that's what sticks with people, right? Mm. You know, I mentioned today in a sermon um, my addiction to Sonic mozzarella sticks, and somebody brought that up after church that's what stuck in their mind hopefully <laughs> the message on first peter and all of that but it's those illustrations that stick in people's minds and i i don't use ai to make up fake ones i use it to help jog my memory to serve as a conversation partner the same way where i have used friends to say like okay like i have like this idea i'm thinking this what do you think here or i've used ai to pull quotes um where it's like, all right, there's like that, there's some kind of weird, vague Lord of the Ring quotes about like, I, I wish I wasn't born during the, I, like, I don't remember it. What is it? And an AI will be able to spit that out for me better than Google can because Google needs the specific keywords and things, whereas AI is thinking on kind of a different level, like a human would, where our brains are all jumbled and messy. Um, there's just, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff like that, that. I'm excited about using it as a conversation partner is how I do it a lot. Mm. I'm also a fiction writer, so it can help me come up with names and uh, places and settings. And, you know, I, I, I like to be in the, the writing seat. I like to do that stuff because it's fun for me. Right. But mm-hmm. um, instead of having to, you know, call up my brother or, you know, uh, hope somebody answers my tweet, I can get a conversation partner going with you know, artificial intelligence source. Ah, uh, interesting. I, I I like that. Uh, uh, artificial intelligence as a conversation partner, and uh, you know, what what you're describing, you're not um asking it for the actual content, but you're asking it more more for like the like the the prompt. It helps you think through things. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I I run ideas by it. Um, in the car, even chat GPT, the paid version has a, a, a tool where you can speak to it and then it will verbally respond to you. So, okay. you know, if I'm in the car thinking about something, I can tell it and it will talk to me and, you know, flesh it out. And it also saves in the chat. So I essentially have notes for later or something like that. And mm. So I, there's all sorts of kind of fun ways to to use it as the personal assistant that I can't afford. So there you go. Yes. Yeah. The, um, maybe, well, when I started podcasting three years ago, mm-hmm. there were folks that would, you'd have to pay um, by the hour to transcribe a, a mm-hmm. podcast. I'll listen to it. And, and but now it's automatic. Like a, AI can provide a, a transcript for, for recordings. Yeah, and it's it's pretty good. It's 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 pretty good. So, yeah, the um, so uh, now to to um, uh, rewind or 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 sh- shift gears a little bit. Besides th- this book for ministry, 
um, and leadership and, and AI in the church. You've also written some some other types of books. Can, can you uh, talk a little <laughs> bit about the, those? Absolutely. Yeah, I also write middle grade fiction. I have my Super Jake series, which is just zany and fun and not spiritually explicit. Although my nonfiction and fiction, everything ends up engaging in culture in some kind of way. So in my books, the bad guys are always personifications of these kind of elements of culture that try to tell us to be a certain way or do a certain thing. Um, and the books help us sort of critically think about that through a superhero that shoots ice cream out of his hands. Um, <laughs> so it's a little more fun if you're a 10 year old boy uh, than an advanced theological essay. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I, uh, I mentioned at the top that I wear a lot of hats and the thing is I've never been able to escape from my love of storytelling in the fiction. I think there's a lot of power in those kind of stories, um, especially when we're thinking of kids where they're, they need some of those stories to really uh, communicate with them in that way, mm -hmm. different than maybe how we communicate with adults. Although don't leave the adults out, you know, they need that kind of communication too. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it's not a superhero that shoots ice cream. Yes. So when did you come up with the character of Super Jake? Uh, Super Jake, I came up with in elementary school because I wanted to be cool. Actually, I wanted to be popular. And um, my name is Jake, obviously. So you could probably guess where the name comes from. <laughs> it was really just like a rebranding. Uh, if I brand myself this way, People will think I'm cool and it'll be kind of unique and different. Um, and it ev eventually found a life on the page rather than some kind of uh, pretend identity I needed to show up as at school. Um, and so over the years, it's been sort of the story on my heart and on my mind. Um, mm. Really, it, it was sat dormant for a while until I realized that it, it wasn't, I, I always kind of thought fiction was the opposite of my theological training and my, you know, advanced stuff. I got my master's degree and I wrote a master's thesis, like, you know, I, I you know, fiction's beneath me or something. And then I just realized eventually that, no, I could use fiction in just as powerful, sometimes even more of an impactful way than, you know, my, my nonfiction, my, my theology and stuff. Mm, right. Right. Um, one of my favorite theologians um, also wrote some of my favorite fiction, Chronicles of Narnia. Sure. Um, absolutely. Yeah. That's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. The um, so w what are what are you learning um, as a as a fiction writer? How, how is that like growing you uh, as a person or, or even spiritually? Well, in fiction, you have to think about um, character development. You have to think about why people do things. And hmm. that's something I've always been fascinated about. You know, over the years, I've briefly thought to step into the counseling and psychology world, but I'm not sure that's exactly where my gifting is. But I've always been fascinated by sort of thinking about how people think, and how that influences everything. So, I mean, in my, my fiction is kid stuff and ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember when I submitted it to agents and got a bunch of rejections, one agent said, uh, the villain just kind of decides to be evil one day. You know, I, I need something a little bit more. Um, and, I, and I was a little bit offended because I was like, well, that's why it's funny. He just wakes up and he's like, I think I'm just going to take over the world. That sounds fun. And then his assistant says, that's a little crazy. And so he decides to just take over the city. Like, just, we'll just start there. Um, but then I started thinking, okay, well, okay, she's right. Why, why does the villain do that? And yeah, it's all hyperbolized and blown out of proportion and not realistic. But I had to think about why is the bad guy doing this? And um, even for a kid's story. Even for a kid's Having story, you have to think yeah. about that. We also have to think about why the good guys do it. And I also, one of the ways I changed the story was mm -hmm. the, the Super Jake had also just decided, once he got his powers, his first thought was, superhero, we'll save the day. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And then I changed it to, to actually the first thing he tries to do is tries to be popular with his ability to produce ice cream. It's the oldest thing in the book. You know, I, I, it's the cliche of like this, the student body presidents, like, you know, vote for me and I'll give you free ice cream or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he, he starts with that and then realizes, wait, I can do good with this. Mm-hmm. So I, I think the way fiction impacts all of that is I have to think about people, even with kids fiction. And that forces me to wrestle with the, with thinking about people in the real world. Um, I don't think it's always good. Well, I, I don't think it's good to villainize and demonize people. Um, not that the, that's an excuse, but to think about, okay, well, how do they reach this position that might be so different than mine? They're probably an intelligent person and they probably connected A, B, and C and came up with D. Mm. And I think that's helped me a lot of my spiritual journey of somebody that isn't so partisan, isn't so willing to just take this extreme or that extreme, Mm -hmm. because as a writer, I know humans are complicated and good people and evil people aren't just what they seem on the surface. Yes. Wow. That man, that, that just the idea of using your powers uh, for like greater good, not, not to be popular that, uh, that, that relates to AI using sure. AI for, for good and not, not just church growth, not just for like a cool Instagram channel, um, or a you cool YouTube channel, but actually using it to build up other people, not just yourself. That That's huge. Like I'm, I'm wrestling with that ten, tension myself with, I just started a second uh, pod or yeah podcast uh, and, uh-huh. and youtube channel and i'm doing it for for fun <laughs> mainly um but there there's that constant tension of the, do i want to be helpful to the listeners and, and viewers um yes that's like on a good day that's my pure motivation but uh realistically having the the temptation of like also wanting to look cool <laughs> and and try Absolutely. to get numbers up right because that's like that's, that's how you reach people is um feeding the the algorithm and, and making the the thumbnail correct so that people <laughs> click on your thing sure it's like ah, oh, it's such a rabbit hole um and so i i really appreciate that for lesson from S- super jake <laughs> like the, the ice creams for other people <laughs> Not, not for yourself, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, the um, I I want to circle back to, uh, the 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 change you made to to go from from ministry and teaching to like, uh, uh r- r- writing writing books, um, and it 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 seems like like a, a brave step um like a courageous step Hmm. um where would you say you've had to like overcome like fears or obstacles um and and be brave well i mean surprise surprise super jake struggles are my own um we Hmm. write our we write ourselves into our characters right i've Hmm. i have always had this desire to be popular to be somebody of status to you know have a respectable career kind of thing um which is something that can surprise those that knows me best because i mean like i chose to be a bible major and i like you know i i haven't chosen the careers that typically people associate with that but Mm -hmm. since graduating you know i have jumped around a lot of different careers that weren't exactly um what you would call like respectable and um hmm. i found myself what, what what's yeah. one what, what's one example uh you know i did substitute teaching for a while hmm. i was in charge of a dorm at my alma mater um i ran around to big box stores and set up displays uh hmm. worked at an office supply store 
you know, all since graduating with a degree and some of those since getting a master's degree, which I was sold a vision of you know, just if you get a master's degree, it'll open up all the doors in the world, mm. uh, maybe for somebody else, but not in my experience. And um, mm. there's a good bit of shame associated with all of this. Mm. Um, and so, you know, part of my story is that has something that's happened the last couple of years is my my marriage failed. Um, yeah. I was the classic uh, cliche a Christian college student who got married in college and um, she decided to end it in the last couple of years. And a part of what what surfaced in all of that was again, this, this deep shame Mm -hmm. where um, I had to support myself and had to struggle between the job that pays the bills and the job that I thought was meaningful and, I wound up teaching, which was both the most uh, teaching at public school. Um, the first time I had stepped into that, and it was the most meaningful career mm. and the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. Um, what was interesting is there was a certain level of respect that went along with teaching, although um, there was also a lot of jokes about how you don't make a lot of money, which is true, especially in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You don't make a lot of money as a teacher. Um, And and so I struggled with, I have a job that at least gets people like, you know, if you say I'm a teacher, people, oh, okay, that's cool. Like we're on board with that. Mm -hmm. Instead of when I said like, oh, I'm a retail merchandiser. They're like, I, what, what's going on? I don't know what that is. Um, Mm -hmm. And this job was was truly ministry in the trenches with kids from impoverished backgrounds, broken homes, mm. um, kids who told me I was the closest thing to a father figure they've ever had, mm. um, especially male teachers being less common generally. Yeah. Um, but I had to step away because it wasn't good for my mental health. It was so much, and I struggled with that savior complex, wanting to save all these kids and realizing that I cannot, I can't, Mm. Um, and not being well-resourced by the schools to Mm. even attempt for a couple of these kids just in the bad scenarios they were in. Mm. Um, So I kind of took that leap um, amidst all of that. to try something that I felt like was more for me instead of for other people. Um, Mm -hmm. Even though it didn't come with (laughs) the glamorous paycheck or even really the glamorous title, Um, you know, for a hot second, I thought people would think it's cool that you're an author, Um, but it hasn't really been my experience. I mean, everybody says they want to write a book. I still think it's cool. I still think it's cool, Jake. I mean, really, everybody says they want to write a book, but then they go and become accountants and doctors. And, you know, they talk about, well, I, you know, I have a real job. Like, I, I wish I could do that fake job that you're doing, living your dreams and being an oh. author and stuff like that. And so oh. it's like, yeah, but um, just with all I've been through, um, yeah, including having a really good therapist, it was just like, this was, this is the time I'm going to jump and if I have to, I can always be a teacher again because they will always hire me because of just the state of the teaching industry, I guess. Yes. Um, I can always have a fallback, but let's jump and see what happens. And it's a struggle um, on a day-to-day basis, mm. but my mental health is better and I feel closer to this calling Um I, I don't ever know if I, I, I don't my view of calling is is not like, well, like here it is plain as day on the piece of paper. This is the this is the the telios. This is the end goal right here. Um, but it's maybe the more bullseye. Of a, right. Yeah. Right. There, I, yeah, yeah. I don't think there's a bullseye, mm. but I feel like like the picture is a little more clear. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, I, I have I, I'm going in the direction that is a good direction for toward me even though i don't know what that end right. goal looks like right it, instead of ten thousand options you're narrowing it down to 10 
<laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You love, you love all the different hats. That, that, that's, I do. That's part of, I think we're, we're similar in that way, Jake. And like, I didn't become a counselor until I was 35. Mm. Right? I was, I was in grad school for 10 years. Mm. Um, yeah, no. Uh, and it, it, it's endlessly fun to be curious and interested in lots of things, but it's hard to be like super successful at finding like the one thing because like kind of like having one thing you're, you're all in and you know you can um uh you know be be successful become expert at, yeah. at those things but it absolutely it, it it definitely sounds like communication teaching and 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 writing is like those are your sweet spot and, and you're and you're doing it i've always kind of known that and then i've always just made choices that didn't allow me to live in those gifts um, mm. just because of the chase of the almighty dollar or mm. the status position or whatever. Mm. And so now it's, it's these days it's been about recognizing like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do what I kind of knew was the path all along that everybody else was like, obviously that's your gifting. Um, mm. And uh, I'm, I'm still relatively young. And so I'm a little bit more comfortable with risks. Maybe um, I don't have uh, dependents, you know, children or a spouse that would be affected by some of these decisions. So mm. I just decided to take that opportunity and see what God take where to, God takes me next. Yes, yeah, that that's great. I um, I I hope uh, the the book is successful and um, leads to to good connections and, 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 and more writing, more, more opportunities, uh, for, for you. That's the plan. Yes. Yeah. No, besides, besides getting the book out and, and the, the, the writing, um, uh, are, are you teaching or, or speaking about, uh, the things that you write about? Yeah. I'm very passionate about reaching, um, church leaders and ministers and and um christian influencers thought leaders i don't know if i love those terms but that's the best like that's the description come up with those are the people uh, you're right <laughs> you know uh, i i i want I, i'm passionate about talking to them and helping them think through some things um where they can help their communities and their context think through those same kind of things mm. um uh, and so, yeah, I, I want to speak more about technology and faith and, and different things like that. And I also uh, help churches and help different contexts with thinking about how to engage with young people. You know, my uh, mm. driver's license is my credential in this case. Like, hey, I'm a youngish person and I have both study the scholarship on this subject and also, you know, been young. And I can, I, I like to try to help churches think about what that looks like um, and how there's a lot, there's a lot of myths about reaching young people. Mm. Um, it's, I don't think it's all about the flashy lights and the fog machine and the TikTok dances. I think authenticity is really where the church um, can reach people because that's the hole in their heart. Mm. Uh, there's that, that authentic, authenticity is missing. And if the church provides that, whew, we're good to go. So I'm doing stuff like that. I also help uh, Christian authors with marketing and different promotion, things like that. The more sort of technical strategy level thing. Uh, I keep busy. Oh, nice. So, so you're coaching or consulting with folks that need help with in, in those areas. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I help specifically Christian authors. I've done fiction and nonfiction. Nonfiction is much easier to promote. Uh, but I love helping people, maybe people that aren't as tech savvy, uh, navigate some of that and think about what it means to provide value to your audience um, more than just, you know, uh, TikTok videos or sleazy Facebook ads or spamming Facebook groups or whatever. Like, let's think about a, a strategy. It's going to be a little more helpful. Mm. That, that, that's awesome. So, um the uh uh the the way uh people can connect you with with you is 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 from your 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 website yeah jake Pop dobrins up. jake dobrins.com 
jakedobrins.com if you don't know how to spell that uh look in the show notes um yes and uh i and my email is just contact at jakedobrins.com too uh if you want to reach out to me and chat Great. always happy to chat yes nice um so uh thank you for for coming on uh jake it, it's uh been a pleasure to finally sit down to talk with you after 100 um, connected absolutely. on 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 facebook um you know uh despite the um not the complaints but you know just like the downsides of facebook <laughs> one of the things that's been a lot of fun is just getting to meet and connect with, with uh, really cool people uh, like you. So uh, yeah, thank, thank you for, for connecting with me uh, online. And, and uh, it's really cool to, to see, uh, you know, the, your, your, your journey and, and also the cool things that you're, you're, you're doing uh, like it inspires me. It inspires me. Uh, oh, good. Thank to, you. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jake. So uh, any, any last thoughts for listeners? Uh, nothing profound comes to mind. Uh, and I've just appreciated, uh, being here and trying to provide some value. Talked about some random things, really curious what you're going to title the episode, um, and, and how you're <laughs> going to summarize everything. But I, I just, I just love being here. Uh, thanks, uh, Savan for the opportunity. You're, you're welcome. God bless you, Jake. God I'll bless. see ya. <laughs>